The human brain, the most remarkable and complex organ in the universe. Some say it contains 10 billion neuron cells. This is about as many as there are stars in the Milky Way. But others say it probably has more than 100 billion. End to end, the neurons of the human brain equal the distance of the Earth to the Moon. How did the human brain develop? Life began approximately three billion years ago. First, there were algae, then bacteria, then invertebrates, then fish, and then reptiles. Two hundred million years ago, the primitive brain of the great reptiles enabled them to survive through primitive responses alone. For example, aggressive defense of their territory. Responses such as these also exist in modern man. Approximately a hundred million years ago, the paleocortex developed, incorporating emotions such as apprehension, fear, and the beginning of memory. In a situation of danger, the instinct for survival is demonstrated by flight. Time has passed. Approximately a hundred thousand years ago, the neocortex developed. It represents 85% of the cerebral mass of the human brain. Now the interpretation of ideas is made possible. Elephant plus club equals food and hide and bones equals art. It is therefore the neocortex which enables man to think and reason, to behave in a civilized manner. Well, almost. The reptilian brain, the paleocortex or primitive mammalian brain, and the neocortex or modern man's brain. Unfortunately, communication between them is not always perfect. Ah! I'm sorry. Why don't you look where you're going, you idiot? You're not going to let him get away with that, are you? Huh? <laughs> Is there anything wrong here? <laughs> well then, move on. <laughs> Keep moving, keep moving. Wonderful, we're approaching the brain. Now you'll be able to see how this remarkable organ functions. It contains mm. billions of neurons with billions mm. and billions of synaptic mm. connections. You'll see it's extraordinary. Mm. But how can we possibly be of help, Professor, if the brain is such a perfect organ? Is oxygen really so important to it? Yes, very important, Globin. The brain's needs are really enormous. It uses 2,000 litres of blood a day, which provides 60 litres of air. This is 20% of the body's oxygen requirements. Without us, if the brain were deprived of the oxygen we supply, 
fainting, and then loss of consciousness would occur. If the supply was cut off, say a few minutes, the brain would suffer irreparable damage and the whole organism would simply die. Is anything wrong, Professor? Have you lost your way? Oh, we'd better move. Move along, move along. Please keep moving. This is not the place to stop and have a chat. Move a little faster there, Gramps. Good heavens, what a day and age. There's no respect for the elderly. In my day, children were seen and not heard. Hey. Oh? Can I help you carry some of your oxygen bubbles, my pretty Globin? Oh. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Calling all organs and blood population. Accelerate the blood circulation immediately. I repeat, accelerate the blood circulation immediately. Please respond to an urgent request from the heart. Uh, well, Professor, aren't you coming with us? No, children. You see, we are independent of the rest of the body. What happens elsewhere doesn't concern us. Even if it has to do with the heart? Oh, no. The brain doesn't obey. It commands. It has absolute priority, Globin, even over the heart. Oh, no, no. Not you lot. <coughs> Take that passage over there. But why aren't they coming with us? Because oxygen is what the brain needs most. And also sugar. But they have to take special passageways assigned to them. Professor, when will we be near enough to the neurons to give them oxygen? Never, my dear. Neurons are too sensitive to come into direct contact with us. It works rather differently, you'll see. There you are. 